A couple of usual stats for you here. Lionel Messi has opened the scoring in six matches at the World Cup, the joint most by any player in the competition. As I mentioned earlier on about Lionel Messi, that was him scoring his first ever knockout goal at the World Cup, which is a stat that pretty much surprised me. Nigel, I'm coming to you on Scaloni and the job that he's doing so far. Obviously, they lost against Saudi Arabia. Former teammate of you, you know him personally. Seems to be very relaxed, very composed, and very good in his team selection. He recognizes the opponent. Um, and, and to me, the job that he's doing so far with this group of players is pretty impressive. And the players seem to be really responding to him. We know they have done, obviously, in South American competition. But at the World Cup level, I still believe that there's more to come from this Argentinian side. And I'm really impressed with Scaloni. What are your thoughts? No, I'm very impressed uh, with Lionel. I think he, he's done a terrific job. And one thing that I commented uh, on him for and uh, complimented him for is how he's got this Argentinian side united. And just like Heath was talking earlier about when Messi gets possession of the ball and he goes and gets the ball, what we used to see was players around him standing still. No one really making any movements or runs because they expected him to grab the ball and basically be Roy of the Rovers and beat five or six players and put in the top corner. But when you look at it now, if you watch that game, when anytime Messi picks up the balls, players are now willing to run in behind, continuing their run, knowing that Messi's going to find me. He's going to make that pass. I think that's the big difference because once he gets the ball, he's already going to have so many players trying to shut, shut him down and close his space. But he's got that willing running now that makes it easy for him to give the ball and get another angle or find another space. So that's what I feel he's done. He's made this team really united, free-flowing. And there's yes, Messi gets a lot of the ball because he is a supernatural talent. That's just normal. But it isn't overly reliant on Lionel Messi getting the ball, beating three or four players and putting the top corner because he was a provider today. And like you said, yeah. Ian, Argentina should have put that game to bed with the chances that they missed, clear-cut chances. It could have been a different scoreline. But I give Lionel Scaloni great credit. I think this is going to be one of the toughest games he plays uh, coaches for now against the, the Netherlands. And when you've got such a very experienced manager going up against you, and yet when, when you look at some of the vulnerability that Argentina showed in this game, I think it's going to be a real difficult game for them against Holland. And I could actually go, I'm telling you, in the favour of the Dutch. Why would you do that? Why would you go for the Dutch in, in that tie then? What, what, what makes you say that? Because we've been, I've been saying, and we've said it a few times, like Argentina finally coming into rhythm, into their form. But then when you watch that performance today, it's hard to say that they're really coming into their form. It feels like uh, a, a, our producer made a great comment, you know, the Irish one called Des. He actually said, and it's something very true, he feels that Argentina at times get way too emotional. They get way over emotional in the games. And I think what we have to understand as well is there's a lot of pressure on these Argentinian players. We get to talk about it. We get to discuss and analyze it. But back home in Argentina, the scrutiny that these guys are facing every game, the analysis and stuff, there is a tremendous amount of pressure on these guys. So whether they're carrying that burden onto the football pitch as well, because of the history of the nation and in, in football in World Cup sense, that could be a part of it. But I still now don't think that Argentina really going to, we're not going to see that amazing Argentina performance. I think we're going to see a, a decent performance, but there's going to be great vulnerability. And I just feel that the Dutch could be that team that really sends Argentina home, in my opinion. Heath, when you look at the Dutch yeah. going up against this Argentinian side, how would they approach it? How would they expect? And we saw a bit of a masterclass from Van Hal today. We'll discuss it obviously later on against the United States of America. But focusing on this game, when the Dutch go up against Argentina, how do you think that masterclass will be then taken into this approach against Argentina from him? I mean, it's tough to say. There's just so many ways. It, it, the, the thing I fear for Argentina about the Netherlands is that they have a full buy-in in the way that they're playing right now, right? This match against the U.S., they decided to attack the flanks and own the flanks, and they did that at a masterclass level. And then on top of that, for the U.S. to have been successful, they needed to win the midfield battle. They needed to win the ground game there. And they lost that battle pretty considerably across the board, whether it's pressing, passing through. And then in terms of how the Netherlands set up, forcing passes through certain lanes, denying certain passing lanes, and just forcing them to have to go over and over and over again or connect 17, 18, 19 passes to get anywhere dangerous. And as soon as they have that, they can break out on the counter. So they can press high. They've got the speed. They've got the youth to be able to do that with the Netherlands. They can sit back and, and withstand pressure and just force you to have a bad turnover here and there. Obviously, uh, I expect Argentina to be far tidier on the ball and in possession with a purpose than the U.S. were in this game. But I expected the U.S. to be better than they were in that in that context. But the tactics of, of, of the Netherlands forced 
the U.S. to have to do things they didn't want to do and made them uncomfortable. And that led to, to counterattacks. And it actually led to a number of players looking more nervous than I'd seen them in a long time in terms of, oh, man, I've got to slot this ball into this tight area. Are they baiting me? Do I, should I play it? Should I not? And second-guessing themselves. And if they can get Argentina into that state, it can be a pretty long game for Argentina in terms of where they're going to get their production. Of course, you still have Messi. Of course, you still have uh, Lautaro Martinez. Of course, you still have Alvarez. And you have a, a plenty of strengths and tools to, to be able to rely on. But I think what I'm seeing from, from the Netherlands is this humility to saying, that, listen, the tactics override everything that we're going to do individually. And if we can do this, and we believe in this manager who just watched uh, Netherlands with ease cruise mm -hmm. past the United States, who... You know, many probably thought it was going to be a much more difficult uh, approach. Argentina are going to have to make adjustments. Now, whether or not they're willing to do that is going to, I think, uh, for me, is going to be the difference of, of whether or not Argentina can beat the Netherlands. If they're going to go out and say, hey, no, we're Argentina. We don't make adjustments. You make adjustments to us. You know, we play this way and we play this way only. If they don't, if they don't have that mentality of saying, hey, plan A doesn't work. We're going to go to plan B. Plan B doesn't work. We're going to sit back or whatever those changes are going to be then I think it could be a really difficult one. I agree with Nigel. They could go out in this round. Real quickly from both of you, as we say goodbye to Australia, they head home now, but they, they head home with their heads held high here. They obviously had uh, the young kid as well, Garan Kual, who came on. He's the youngest player to play in the knockout stages of a World Cup since Pele in 1958. And he had a big chance. Great save from Emi Martinez right at the end of the game. The kid looks like a superstar, but they did themselves really proud here with their team spirit, with their passion. They go back to Australia with their heads held high, Nigel. They definitely do. And like you said, Ian, there for me, that was a world-class save by Martinez. That was a game-changing save because the kid did everything he can in the box, knows he ain't going to get time, gets a turn on in the right foot, great connection and a strike. But that's what you call a strong arm save by Martinez. And that is why he's so highly rated in Argentina's number one. Because any other goalkeeper, that's going in. And we're looking at a complete different scoreline. But the kid done everything well. I was very impressed with Australia side. So impressed from start to finish. They showed a lot of I say, but it's not easy, but grit, determination, character, and a lot of what you see from those Australian players is a representation of Australian people. And I think that is 100%. absolutely terrific to see. And I think with a bit more um, freedom in getting players to really express themselves and a bit more investment in, in really encouraging more players and young kids to play football in Australia, they can be a force to be reckoned with because they've got a great foundation there. And I think they can build on tremendously from this. Yeah, I fully agree. The only thing I would say is similarly to the U.S., they've now got academies built out. They're developing the players there, and you're starting to see a player come up at a younger age with more tools or more polish than they would have otherwise or had to leave or go abroad. And, you know, a different journey is starting to begin coming out of Australia. But the other thing I would say about that, that, that match is, unfortunately, it's going to come down to the one moment where somebody decided to wind up Messi on the sideline, pull his shirt, pull his jersey, make him mad, and then all of a sudden you draw that foul and Messi is engaged. Two minutes later, he bang, 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 and then he, he scores one on you. And that's just a reminder that, you know, little little details in these matches matter. And that's the wrong person you want to be making mad because once he woke up, and he wasn't, you know, he was somewhat passive up until that point. But once he woke up and he got his opportunities, and you could say it's all relative, but, you know, that, that's the one guy you want to let, let him let him let him stay dormant for a while. You know, you don't want to wind him up uh, because that's what happens to you. You find yourself on, on, on a flight home. Yeah, I think what they experience these Aussies have learned from this, they will take it to the next World Cup and they will get better. They have some real potential there. Obviously, some good youngsters coming through. I thought they mixed the experience with the passion and obviously recognizing that Aussie grit, as you mentioned, that mentality of we will not be beaten easy. You're going to have to show us your true quality to beat us. I think they head back out of the World Cup with their heads held very high and we look forward to watching them again 